Number 1. Kai Andrea Cook After using a dating app to set up a robbery that ended up with a man being shot in South Daytona, Florida, 18-year-old Kai Andrea Cook was given a 20-year jail sentence. Cook was astonished when Circuit Judge Matt Foxman announced the penalty, as her attorneys had reportedly assured her prison was not in the cards. The teen screamed and begged the court to reduce her sentence as her mother fell on the ground crying. At her next sentencing hearing, a more composed cook told the judge, I want to inspire younger girls and younger youth to not make the same mistakes that I made, and I just want to better myself and put this behind me. Judge Foxman responded, I think you've got good in you, and I think you've got potential. Don't lose sight of that. Number 2. Brandon Spencer Brandon Spencer was arrested in 2012 after allegedly firing shots at a rival gang member during a Halloween party near the University of Southern California. Four attempted murder charges were brought against him. In the court video, Spencer can be seen hitting his head on a table as a judge hands down a sentence of 40 years to life in prison after being found guilty. Editor Francis Taylor, who had long known Spencer's family, wrote that an overzealous prosecutor and the coerced testimony of a defendant pointed the finger at Spencer and without any hard evidence, he was found guilty in only three hours late on a Friday afternoon. According to Taylor, new sentencing laws and the reversal of testimony from the coerced witness could give Spencer a shot at resentencing or a vacated conviction. Number 3. Erica Maybutz, Shanita Latrice Cunningham In 2011, two South Carolina women, Erica Maybutz and Shanita Latrice Cunningham, received life sentences for the murder of a three-year-old girl. Upon learning their fate, the women started crying and fell unconscious on the floor while family members shrieked and sobbed in the audience. Butts and Cunningham were later transported out of the courtroom in wheeled office chairs, hyperventilating. Elizabeth Gordon, assistant managing solicitor for Charleston County, said the two women were responsible for the worst child abuse case she had ever seen. It is nearly impossible for words to accurately describe what these women did to that poor little girl, Gordon said. In most of the homicide by child abuse cases, somebody made a bad decision one day. Butts and Cunningham, made a decision every single day that they were going to beat that child. Number 4. Jaleel Smith Riley In Cincinnati, 23-year-old Jaleel Smith Riley was convicted and pled guilty to both charges of shooting and killing Sharon Brooks and injuring her boyfriend. Smith Riley cried during the witness statements and then, against the advice of his lawyers, withdrew his plea, incurring the wrath of Hamilton County Common Pleas Judge Charles Kubicki, who sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. After hearing his sentence, Smith Riley fell to the floor of Kubicki's courtroom. Police pulled him up, and he interrupted the judge, asking, So what does he get? Number 5. Jaleel Hoskins After he was arrested for the brutal murder of Latris Mays, a mother of five in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Jaleel Hoskins entered a plea of guilty to second-degree murder. The court gave him a life sentence without the chance of parole, prompting Hoskins to toss the podium in the direction of the judge before officers removed him from the courtroom. According to Kent County Assistant Prosecutor Kelly Kongsty, Hoskins strangled Mays to death because she wanted to tell police about Hoskins' assault outside a Southeast Side Club. After killing the young mother, he disposed of her body in a dumpster in Wyoming. Number 6. Michael Marine In 2012, Michael Marin faced between 7 and 21 years in prison after being found guilty of arson and insurance fraud in Phoenix, Arizona. When he heard his sentence, he covered his mouth with his hands and appeared to swallow something. Shortly thereafter, he started to gag and died in the courtroom. A toxicology report later revealed that he had poisoned himself with homemade cyanide capsules. Marin had told an elaborate story about barely escaping the blaze, but firefighters were suspicious and arson investigators concluded that someone deliberately set four small fires on the ground floor. Number 7. Larry Nassar Faces Vigilant Father Larry Nassar was the team doctor of the United States Women's National Gymnastics Team. Accusations of sexual abuse accumulated among multiple generations of young women and girls on the team, who said the doctor had been molesting them under the guise of specialized medical care for decades. 
Nassar was later found guilty in a court of law, where attorneys for more than 90 victims participated in the sentencing phase. In addition to a 60-year jail term for child pornography, Larry Nassar was given a sentence ranging from 40 to 175 years in prison for a litany of sexual assault charges. In a chilling 2018 court video, Rando Margraves, a father of three sexually assaulted victims, can be seen begging the judge to give him five minutes alone with the demon. Judge Janice Cunningham replied, that's not how our legal system works. Margraves attempted to meet out his own justice in the courtroom, drawing stern condemnation from the judge, even as many observers called him a hero. He later apologized and said that his daughters were the real heroes. Judge Cunningham added, we cannot and I cannot tolerate or condone vigilantism or any other type of action that basically comes down to an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's not what's best in this situation. What's best here is that we take this horrible tragedy and we learn to educate people. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.